I'm Nick Book of Indo Genius, and we just wanted to catch up with you guys in the middle of this extraordinary game of cricket going on India versus Pakistan semi final. India are going to win. Gaurav, you are the biggest star in contemporary Indian music, electronica. You've played all around the world. How did you manage to get a global audience? How do you manage to get people to listen to your music? Just uh, by being a workaholic and uh, honestly speaking what I felt in my heart as being here. Uh, representing a whole generation which has grown up with electronic music but at the same time uh, uh, is, is true to their roots of, of, of uh, Indian classical folk and uh, hence we just did uh, what came naturally to us and people liked it so it was cool. So the stage teaches you elementary basics, I mean you're there and you're, um, I mean it's an open world for you to really learn the technique of, of who you are and what you can be as your character. And I think when you when you strike an instant rapper with the audience, it just comes alive. So uh, the stage does become the guru in a way, and you're the shishya, and you're so, sort of uh, you're there for the stage. So you're doing whatever the stage demands of you or commands of you. And um, I think it's 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 an incredible art, theatre. In TV, what it becomes is it's it's primarily a medium of the close up. So. <laughs> The way I look at it is, for television, you need to uh, really, really use your, your, your expression more than anything else. On stage, it becomes body language. In, and I think body all, work. it is, yeah. it is. I mean, if I had to, if I had to make a uh, sort of movement on, on television and with a close-up that tight, all I need to do is raise my eyes. Whereas if I raised my eyes on like stage... Like you did in the laughing <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But if I, to, if, I to, if I had to raise my eyes on, on stage, my goodness, I'd have to raise my face for people to know that. Yes. And it becomes much, much bigger and bolder and you sort of throw yourself into it. And I think music becomes an element in very, a very important element in theatre as well as film, as well, as well as television. So I think they all tie up beautifully together. So you can't really separate them yes, and yes. segregate them. It's also very interesting how promiscuous, <laughs> is that the right word? How promiscuous the performing arts are. Yes. <laughs> they are, it's a very promiscuous way of living life. I'm not talking about having affairs with them. <laughs> Namaste, ladies and gentlemen of India. Sorry I can't be with you, but Mark and I are proud of the challenge we set ourselves 15 years ago. Proud to say that 97% of our students are employed, 87% of those in the entertainment industry. So we think the dream we've set out to achieve is coming along very nicely. We have some British national students who are Indian, uh, but our first actual Indian national student arrived with us last year and we hope this is the start of great things to come. So come on down, check us out. We'd love to be part of your story and we'd love you to be part of ours.
was about 18 when I uh, just randomly went in for this hunt and we were all at that point where it was what, uh, 99, which was an amazing time in India because everything new was happening, the new cable TV. So we had one channel which we all have watched and we'd get it for like three, four hours a day and from that we suddenly started seeing this huge explosion in India with lots of new channels coming about, a lot of new stuff coming out. So everyone was sort of starting out and seeing. What I feel we lack here in India is uh, uh, identifying what you would be good at and what art form would you be good at and extracting that out of you. There's absolutely nothing you can do when you're on the top of, in, of Indian rock. There's nothing there. It's just like, wow, okay, so now we can go to colleges and uh, play Led Zeppelin covers. Really need to try. Oh, there's, a, there's a phrase called chalta hai, which translated into English means, it'll do. And that seems to apply across everything, whether it's uh, a plate of biryani, is it an excellent plate of biryani, chalta hai. Is, it, uh, is he a good bowler, yeah. chalta hai. Is it a good band? Chalta hai. If you're, if you're always going to be happy with the chalta hai, you will never aspire to seek out. I'm glad I'm sitting with these group of people because I think this is the change. Uh, these are all people who've done it on their own. We've all sort of practically, uh, as Sahu said, uh, Cyrus, we've all uh, swum in the dark. We've thrown ourselves into the oceans uh, and learned how to swim. It so much reminds me of the early days when we were starting Lipper. You were the, guy, you were the people we were talking to. And it, it's, it's wonderful to relive that nearly 20 years later in another place. And you've achieved that for me this afternoon. You've given up time in your lives. You're clearly major, major people here. And I'm just really going to just thank you and um, say, for better or for worse, you probably haven't heard the last of me. Thank you. <laughs>